Hello, and welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. to get my hair cut for the first time professionally in, I don't know, three years. <laughs> it's gotten a little bit out of hand in the back. It's literally like butt crack length. <laughs> and knowing me, I'll probably come back with bangs. Anyway, I will be back shortly and hopefully we can chat about some knitting. <laughs> You've got me questioning my position Am I just filling out? Taking space not with as much grace Am I a second choice of all the not a Roy's Royce? Welcome to the Young Folk Knits Podcast. My name is Casey, and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. If you're new, then I'm so excited to have you here. This is a channel where I mainly chat about knitting, also some spinning, sewing, crochet, and whatever other crafts I'm into at the moment. I live on a small farm in Arkansas with my husband and our children where we are beekeepers, we raise chickens and animals, and love spending time outdoors in the foothills of the Ozarks. 
I got the bangs. I always want bangs and I always talk myself out of them or I get them and I regret them. I haven't been to a professional hairdresser in like three years. So the bang urge was strong. I went ahead and did it. Hey, 70s vibes forever. So I really wanted what is called the bottleneck bangs and that's where you know you have a little bit of bang right here but it really comes down and frames your face all the way to your chin and I got more of a curtain bang in the end but I do like it she did blow my hair out which is always really weird for me because I'm used to seeing my hair curly I also wear glasses because my contacts really bother my eyes and they cost a lot of money so during COVID I stopped buying contacts period and I haven't wore them in I don't know it's been three years it was probably a little bit before COVID actually and so I only wear my glasses and I'm blonde as a bat so when I go to the hairdresser you know I always have to take my glasses off and I sit there in the chair and I can't see a thing I have no idea what's going on <laughs> so at the very end I put my glasses back on and I always have to get used to straight hair and whatever else is new like all of a sudden but enough about the bangs so it's actually tuesday evening and here in the united states this week's a little bit of a shorter week i'm excited my husband is going to be off work for a few days so i get to spend some extra time with him but it's doubtful i'll get much extra knitting time this weekend i did want to pop on and just show you what i'm working on and where i'm at on everything and then we can catch up a little bit more next week so first of all, I have something I have not shown y'all in a while, and that is my Alpenglow. And I have finished the body. So excited. I love it. Operation Make This Yoke Sweater Fit, I think has been a success. I really love it. The key for this one was going down a size. I think that I have really been knitting them a little bit too big and also the yoke depth maybe a little bit too short. Now some patterns I want to have an oversized sweater. <sighs> So I'm still trying to figure out that whole thing on the circular yokes, but just taking it one day at a time here, one pattern at a time. And this is for a more fitted sweater. I've dropped a whole bunch of sleeve stitches here. Thankfully wool don't go nowhere. Also, it's like 4.15, but it's almost dark outside. So I'm also gonna try to be really quick before I lose all of the light. But I absolutely love how this turned out. I definitely had to knit it longer than it was called for in the pattern. I find with almost every Andrea Mowry pattern, I have to knit both the yoke depth longer and the sweater length itself longer for it to be a good fit for me. I'm 5'8", and I don't feel like I have a long torso. I actually think that my legs are a lot longer in proportion than my torso is even but even with that being said I have I always have to lengthen it so I did pick up and start knitting one of the sleeves the right sleeve and since I had quite a bit of spin cycle left I decided I was going to try to color manage a little bit I don't really have enough matching color to make it perfectly match the straps going down the body or to make it perfectly match the other sleeve but I want to color manage it a little bit, a little bit. And I think I'll be happier with it in the end that way. Overall, I am really pleased with this Quince & Co. Chickadee for the main fabric. And then I'm using Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool for my contrast color. And then this is also Quince & Co. Chickadee and this is a farmer's daughter fiber surrey so i'm loving it i'm really excited i want to hurry up and get this done and i also did a tubular bind off like i did the whole shebang i did the, the rearranging I did the two rows of you know knit slip knit slip and then pearl slip pearl slip and then i did a one needle bond sewn bind off 
And I mean, yeah, it looks good. It's very thick. It's way thicker than a regular bond off would be. I think I might have been happy with just regular bind off, but I thought, why not? I'm going to go for it with this one. <laughs> of course, that means I probably need to do it on the sleeves as well, which I'm kind of over it. It took a lot out of me just to do the hem, so. Regular bind off for the sleeves, it may be. It has been like 40 degrees Fahrenheit here every day, and today it's about 60 degrees. So, of course, I stopped at Sonic and got a chocolate milkshake. So good. Worth every calorie. I think it's been a bit since I've done an episode to catch up on my projects, but I also have a new cast on, which I love. This is the Cargill Jr. sweater, which is a pattern by Rebecca Chloe from the Crea Bea podcast. Absolutely love it. She recently designed and released the Cargill sweater which is in the adult size, and I want to make one of those really badly. But when she designed this pattern in the ch children's size, or the Cargill Junior, I was like, Rebecca, please let me test it. If it's not roosters, it's dogs. So it calls for a strand of fingering held with a strand of mohair. I am allergic to mohair. I cannot knit with it, and I would assume that my child would probably also be sensitive to it at least but nevertheless i can't knit with it <laughs> so i thought about doing a strand of surrey alpaca and in the end i decided i wanted to try something a little bit different so i have one strand of isire alpaca one which is 50 percent alpaca 50 percent wool in a fingering weight and i'm holding that together with one strand no, 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 no. Okay, let's do that again. I'm holding one strand of alpaca two, which is the fingering weight, 50% alpaca, 50% wool. And I'm holding that with a lace weight, also by Isire, alpaca one, which is 100% alpaca. And it's not fuzzy like a surrey. It looks almost identical to the strand of fingering weight with the wool in it, but it's definitely thinner. So this is the lace weight, and this is what I have left of this ball of the fingering weight, and I'm holding those together, and I'm absolutely loving this. This is the first time I've ever worked with the Isire Alpaca 1 or 2, and I love it. I want to knit everything out of it. The colors are absolutely stunning. I think that the price is pretty, you know... It's not exorbitant, but it is, you know, a little bit more on the pricey side. I ordered mine from the Wool & Company website, and I am so pleased with it. Look at this. So this stitch pattern is almost like a ribbing. It's very squishy, big time squishy, and very stretchy. It's not stretchy up and down. It's stretchy side to side. So whenever I blocked my sample, it definitely stretched a lot this way and it took some of the length out. Because of that, I am gonna knit mine longer than I probably looks like I need to. But I am going to go back and pick up at the neck and I will be doing a folded neckline as the pattern calls for. So far this pattern has been an absolute joy to work. Rebecca did a wonderful job with the numbers and um, the pattern itself. She's a very talented designer, but I love it. I think it's gonna be super cute. My plan this weekend is to focus on this and I think I could get it done in the next few days. We'll see. My hands have been hurting really bad lately. It's the only thing. So it might slow me down a little bit. Sometimes the dip stitch portion, I have to take a little bit of a break. And I think it's just because of the rheumatology issues that I have with my hands. I'm testing it with my friend Anina, who is also a wonderful designer and podcaster. And also my friend Haley, who on Instagram, her name is A Mother's Melody. Who else is testing this with us? Mm, there's a lot of great testers. I'm trying to, I always, I'm in multiple tests and I can never remember who is in which one. So instead of showing 
all of my projects, which I don't even know how many I have. I'm just going to show the ones that I actively worked on this week. Another one of those projects is this beret, which is a pattern by Sorry Nordland, and it is the Beast Beast beret. And I've completely finished all my increases. I am now just working the length. So you start out by making this little I cord. And from the I cord, you start increasing and you increase really rapidly to get that super flat round shape at the top. And it goes really quickly. I, I've only worked on this for like two hours and I've got quite a bit done. You do hold a strand of fingering with a strand of lace weight. So that helps it to knit up a lot faster. And I'm using US 5 needles to knit it on. So I am knitting with this color, which is Knitting for Olive Merino, my fingering yarn, and it is in the color Robin. And I'm holding that with this Farmer's Daughter Fiber Surrey in the color Flower Point. Doesn't it just glow? I mean, honestly, it just, mm. This is a very brick red color, very matte almost. This is very shiny and very orangey red. And when you hold them together, I think it makes this really beautiful orangey red fabric. Lots of orange in it. We'll see. I'm excited to get this done. So the next width that I have, I have not shown y'all in a while. But it is my MCAL shawl for the Twist and Turns West Knits 2022 MCAL, aka the Superhero Shield. <laughs> oh, Stephen. I think that Stephen West is an absolutely amazing designer. And I think this shawl was really fun. But in the end, after that last clue, I was just like, mm, I don't think it's going to be something I will wear like that. I might hang it up on the wall and think it's a really pretty art deco piece, but not something I would wear. So I went back to what I was originally really wanting, which was that Southwest vibe <laughs> of a shawl. And I have now gone rogue. So this first part right here was clue number one, the chevrons. And then this was clue number two. And I had done the cables on the bottom here of clue number two. So I actually went back and ripped those cables out. And instead what I did was tie in this sort of nutmeg color from Pearl Soho Linen Quill. I think it's called Fresh Nutmeg maybe. And I have started doing a ribbing, a two by two ribbing. And I did that for like 20 rows. And then I wanted to incorporate <laughs> Excuse me. So then I wanted to incorporate this color and I did a little garter section right here. And then I have started back with the nutmeg color um, on the two by two ribbing. And I'm gonna do an equal amount after that garter section. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. And then my plan is to reattach the kiln red color and do that all the way across in like a little garter border and call it a day. <laughs> we will see. But at this moment with the sort of the vision I'm seeing in my head, I'm really loving those colors together. So I think it's gonna turn out really nice in the end. I'm dropping all the stitches. Guess I should stop flailing my knits around. I have a few other projects, but I think that's all I'm gonna chat about for right now. I did really want to do the Andrea Mowry Bear Paw Sock Challenge, which starts Wednesday and goes through Monday. But I was really stupid and I ordered some of the Bear Paw Sock DK, which I wanted to use so I could hold it single and not have to hold fingering double. 
and it didn't ship, didn't ship, didn't ship. And I'm like, that's weird. It's not going to be here. And I looked on the website and it says, don't order this for the Andrea Mowry knit along. This yarn will not ship until December. <laughs> So at that point, I took it as a sign and I don't think I'm going to do the Andrew Mowry knit along. I have so many projects that I should be working on. I also have another test for a sweater and I have a, a cowl test as well. I should really probably finish those. <laughs> This is my very first spindle, uh, I'm bought spindle. I cannot move on from the drop spindle to the spinning wheel. This is my very first bobbin of hand spun and it is in the Malabrigo Nube milkshake break. Mm, so good. So yes, I know that I am total newbie, not good at this at all. But I'm actually really proud of how much more consistent I'm getting with each spin. I really love it. I enjoy it so much. So my second bobbin is almost done with the other half of my Malabrigo. And I am going to ply this together. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to chain ply it or probably just a good old two ply. Anyway, my plan is to use this as one of two colors in a cowl that I am testing for my friend Bridget on Instagram. And she has some really lovely designs. She has this beautiful sweater pattern that I'm drooling over the cables in it. But I think that this cowl would be really fun to knit up some hand spun in. So that's my goal. I need to get that done as quickly as possible so I can start knitting with it. <laughs> You also may notice that some of my plants are no longer propagating. I have quite a few up higher. I just potted these little babies up. They just propagate wildly and I absolutely love them. I have a lemon lime prayer plant propagating up at the top that you can't quite see. But I think the next thing I'm going to propagate is some more of my emerald ripple. Those things propagate like nobody's business. They propagate profusely. So do the prayer plants and the, potho the pothos. Either that or some polka dot begonia. I have propagated multiple ones of those and they are doing really well. So I think I might propagate a few more so I can pot a lot of them together and make a nice full little plant that I can give to my friend. All right, that is all I have to share today. Please consider subscribing. It does help my channel out a lot, as well as likes and comments. And until we meet again, happy knitting y'all.